When Apple introduced the new Mac Mini along with the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, they also introduced the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. In this video, I go over the improvements in these chips so you can decide what's best for you. Presenting the Tech I Have. With Don Bullock. Hi there, and welcome to the Tech Eye Hound. I'm Don. Apple really surprised a whole lot of people earlier this year and caught them off guard when they announced the M2 Pro and Max chips. In this video, I'm going to be covering the differences in those chips from the M1 series. Plus, I have some breaking news about the M3. For the base Mac Mini, Apple just swapped out the M1 chip to the M2 chip. Since all the information on this switch was covered by Apple for the M2 MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, I'm not going to say anything more about this change. I'll just switch from the M1 information to the M2 information here if you're interested. In this video, I'll concentrate on the M2 Pro and Max chips. This is what some people call the product quilt for the M1 Pro chip. Let's look at what Apple has changed according to this marketing graphic. I'm going to switch out what's on the M1 Pro graphic to show the changes for the M2 Pro. The new chip utilizes what has been referred to as the second generation 5 nanometer technology. Apple and TMC haven't fully explained the difference compared to the first generation except they say it's faster. The M2 Pro has gone from 33.7 billion transistors to over 40 billion. That's a significant jump, but there's no breakdown as to where those extra transistors are placed on the die. There's an increase from 10-core to 12-core CPU. Apple has added two more high-efficiency cores to the CPU. Why high-efficiency cores and not high-performance cores, they didn't say. Tim Millett, VP for Platform Architecture, states that this change makes the CPU up to 20% faster. The GPU has been increased as well. They have gone to a max of 16 to 19 cores. To me this sounds a little strange like a uh, why 19? The configuration of the 19 cores looks strange on the die as well. Some experts are thinking that Apple is trying to fix a performance bottleneck that was on the M1 series chips. With this change Apple claims that the GPU can be up to 30% faster. No numbers were given for the other configurations. We'll have to wait and see what the reviewers say, and we know they will. The neural engine has increased from 11 trillion operations per second to 15.8 trillion operations per second. According to Apple, that's a 40% increase in speed. Apple still claims that they have the industry-leading performance per watt. This was kept in the graphic but moved and the text color changed for some reason. In my opinion, this is where Apple Silicon is leaps and bounds ahead of the competition. It's what allows for greater battery life, but more importantly, Apple M-Series laptops don't lose any performance when the power cord is disconnected, as happens with most of the competition. Apple mentions their high-performance media engine with ProRes. According to Tim Millett, this new media engine has twice the ProRes support compared to its M1 Pro counterpart. This dramatically accelerates media playback and transcoding. I've seen some reports from video editors that ProRes rendering has increased dramatically in some cases. The M2 Pro also carries over the Thunderbolt 4 from its predecessor, plus 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth stays the same. I found it interesting that there was no improvement here. Apple also switched to LPDDR5 memory, which increases both performance and power efficiency. It will support bandwidth requirements for 8K, 360-degree video, and AI, as well as AR and VR. This is an improvement that some overlook. I almost did. In their presentation, Apple actually gave us a chance to see one of the chips in Tim Millett's hand. And here's a close-up. This is a great way to see the actual size of one of these chips compared to his fingers. Now I'll give you a comparison of the M2 Pro and the regular M2 chip. You can see the extra size. Someone calling themselves High Yield on Twitter produced this interesting diagram of the different sections of the M2 Pro chip. 
It gives us some idea of how all the sections are laid out on the chip. Now let's compare the M2 Pro to the M2 Max chip, and then we can compare the M2 Max with the M1 Max. So now let's look at all the changes from the M1 Max chip to the M2 Max chip like we did the Pro. I'll do the same comparison with the M1 and M2 Max chips. You'll see some similarities with this upgrade. Again, Apple is using TMC's second generation of the 5 nanometer process. We still don't have any information from Apple as to when TMC and Apple will switch to 3 nanometer. Many believe it will happen with the M3 generation. This chip has 67 billion transistors. According to Apple, this is an increase of at least 10 billion transistors from the M1 Max and more than triple the transistors in M2. The CPU with 12 cores is an increase of 2 cores. As with the M2 Pro chips, Apple has added two more high efficiency cores to the CPU. So the CPU cores in both the Pro and Max chips are the same. This means that the M2 Max also sees a 20% increase in CPU performance, according to Apple. With the 38 GPU core maximum, this is only an addition of 6 cores when compared to the M1 Max. But Apple still claims it's a possible 30% increase in speed for the GPU. This is exactly the same neural engine with the same 40% increase in speed that we saw in the M2 Pro chip. And now with what's become a standard for Apple, they are claiming that they are the best with performance per watt. The media engine is the same one we saw in the M2 Pro chip, except there are two of them in the Max chips, bringing them up to two times faster video encoding than the M2 Pro, according to Apple. Of course, the M2 Max retains the Thunderbolt 4, and it stays the same in memory bandwidth at 400 gigabytes per second. Apple increased the Max memory to 96 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory. Well, that takes care of all the changes in the M2 Max and the M2 Pro chips. Now, the good folks over at 9to5Mac came up with this chart. It shows many of the changes in these chips and gives you an idea of what 9to5Mac thinks are the most important changes to look at. Overall, the changes aren't really big. So how well do they perform? I could report to you here all of the test results that others have found and have recorded on their YouTube channel or in magazines, but I think you need to go directly to those sources instead of me quoting them here. All the difference in hardware configurations and the apps is endless. All the test results that can be done or the benchmarks using specific apps won't truly help you decide between M2 and M2 Pro and M2 Max chips or even if you'd be okay with the M1 series of chips. All they'll tell you is that in most cases, the M2 chips are indeed somewhat faster than the M1 series of chips, but not by a whole lot. These results also depend on varying degrees to the amount of RAM and SSD storage that's available. In most cases, the more SSD storage and RAM you can afford, the better performance you'll see. What may help more are reports on how specific computers are performing on tasks that are close to what you plan to use a computer for. You also need to look at the price per performance of those improvements. For those of us who don't earn money at what we do with our computers, the cost of some of those improvements may not be worth the higher price tag for the computer. The performance of the chips and the specific apps we use and the price of those improvements are what's most important. Find some reviews of people who are doing what you're doing at the level you're working at. An internet search will provide many videos and articles on the subject. The internet is full of specific reviews. You should also be able to find groups on social media who are using computers in the same way you use one. I'm sure if you're here, you know how to find groups that are specific to both the computer and the software you use. The input from those groups should be very valuable. Personally, I'm very happy with the results I'm getting from my M1 Max Studio. Any time saving I get switching to an M2 Max wouldn't be worth it. At this point, I'm happy with the configuration of my studio. It's better than the Mac Mini. For me to consider an upgrade, Apple would have to considerably improve the performance and function. Now, if I was still working on my Intel Mac over here, 
I'd most likely jump at the chance to get an M2 Max MacBook Pro. I realized that to do that, I'd lack some ports. Mac Mini ports compared to the Studio ports. So I'd have to get some kind of hub, like the CalDigit. It's an outstanding machine, but I just don't want to go that direction. If I hadn't upgraded a year ago, I'd certainly strongly consider it now. Or would I wait and see what they do next? If they upgrade a Mac Studio, hmm, that would be a hard decision. Yes, my M1 Mac Studio is now out of date. I learned a long time ago, back in 1958, when I was in the fourth grade, that anything to do with electronics is obsolete even before you buy it. I bought this one transistor Bell Productions portable radio with my allowance for $7.95. And in the next Sears catalog, they had the same radio with two or three transistors. I learned a lesson back then that technology improves quickly. How soon Apple replaces the M2 series of chips with M3 is still unknown at this time. There are many who continue to speculate when Apple will start switching to M3, and TMC is still working on the process. They don't think they're going to get enough chips out this year. According to this article in Extreme Tech, Apple has procured TNC's entire first run of 3 nanometer chips. According to the article, TMC hopes to be producing 45,000 wafers a month by March. For context, TMC reportedly produces 1.3 million wafers a month on the 5 nanometer process. Will M3 be faster and better than M2? <laughs> Most certainly. We have breaking news. The team at MaxTech on YouTube just reported a leak on the new Apple chips. The M2 series chips are based on the A16 that's in the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. According to Vadim, he has received some leaks on the performance of the A17. According to that leak, the A17 will be 63% faster than the A16. Now, I know that number sounds strange and probably unrealistic, and Vadim tends to overreact to things. Now, Vadim warns that the leaker stated that this was a prototype chip and it got hot during his testing. If this prototype chip is close to the final chip that Apple will use, obviously they will have to decrease the power to bring down the temperature as they have been doing in their past chips. Here are the Geekbench scores that Vadim was quoted to get that number, so they are extremely high for an iPhone chip. A day later, Shrimp Apple Pro released these numbers on Twitter. While the Geekbench 6 scores are lower, they're the same ballpark. But Shrimp Apple Pro couldn't verify the numbers, so he said to take them with a grain of MSG. In his comment on Shrimp Apple Pro's numbers, Vadim said, Wow, over 3,000 for Geekbench 6. Quite impressive. Second fastest chip ever made, only behind Intel's highest end i9 chip, factory clocked. Someone named Cal added, Wow, that's a better ST score than 99% of the high-end desktop CPUs. Soon after someone else on Twitter quoted the same numbers as Shrimp Apple Pro, Apple Insider posted a link to this article. A benchmark leak claiming to be for the upcoming A17 chip claimed that the iPhone 15 Pro will be extremely powerful, but there are big reasons to be skeptical. As the generations change, Apple's chips get faster and more powerful, which is visualized in benchmark results. However, sometimes these results can be a little too high to be realistic. While you would expect a performance boost each year, the amount doesn't usually jump as much as the rumor figures propose. Apple's typical 10% jump is still considerable for its chips, but 20% would be a bit of a stretch. Furthermore, we weren't able to find any entries in the Geekbench database that matched these results. This article from Mac Rumors predicts the improvement of the A17 in a different way. According to the article, the A17 using TMC's 3 nanometer process will require 35% less power. The article went on to say that it will do that while providing better performance. As we've seen in the past, unlike Intel and Qualcomm, Apple tends to use the efficiency over raw power. We've seen that in their industry-leading performance per watt statement 
So what does this have to do with Max? The same 3 nanometer process was predicted for the M2 Pro and Max chips. Obviously that didn't happen, but it's been reported that the M3 chips will be made on the 3 nanometer process. Yep, folks, the decision just became more difficult. Predicting what Apple is going to make in the future that will better meet your needs is virtually impossible. I can't remember the number of times that leaks have been wrong. Until someone gets on stage at Apple Park and tells us exactly what they've made and what they're going to be selling and what it does, we really don't know. You just have to look at your specific needs and when you want to upgrade and just jump in. Just like with my one transistor radio, whatever you decide to buy will be out of date before you buy it. Apple's already working diligently on its replacement. 